Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yara Awais, and I'm really glad and honored to be with you this afternoon. My presentation or talk, let's say, is entitled Technology and the Future of Dental Practice. I was trained to become a dentist in the mid-90s, and during that period, we didn't have PowerPoint presentations, or it was really limited, and not all professors used it. We used to have overhead projectors with hand-drawn or hand-written slides. Does any one of you know what an overhead projector is? Hmm, not really, not many. So you guys are younger than I thought. So an overhead projector is something that looks like this, okay? So this thing was really primitive and limited, and it did not convey the message really easily. So this made the learning and teaching both difficult. Nowadays, and due to technology, things are a lot different. Now our students can watch videos on YouTube instead of having to hang up around the professor to watch him demonstrate on a tiny tooth. The professor can also do the demonstration and have a camera filming what he's doing and have it projected on the screen and students can watch, watch it really easily and pay attention to different types of details. These technological advancements, as I said, have made both teaching and learning really much easier. Now, dentistry is not separated from all of this. Technological advancements have made a revolution in the dental practice. I remember when I graduated in the 1999, I was trained using the same equipment that my parents were trained on during the 60s and 70s of the past century, but with a slightly different design, let's say, but the equipment were basically the same. But after that, and during the 2000 years, things have taken a different perspective, and technological advancements have made a revolution in the dental practice, let's say new technologies and new materials and uh, new methods. Technological advancements in dentistry could be seen in the diagnosis and treatment of dental issues, the design and execution of de different dental procedures, and the transitions from traditional techniques to more modern uh, technological alternatives. And also they have revolutionized dental research, which also helps in the development of the dental profession and dental practice. Uh, I will start by the simple thing, which is the use of an intraoral camera. Although these technological advancements are not yet widely available in all dental clinics or institutions because they, are still, they still have a high cost, but they have made the practice of dentistry much easier. And we are hoping and looking forward that the prices would go down in the near future and they would become widely available in all the uh, dental practices and institutions. Let's go back to what we started with, the intraoral camera. The intraoral camera is a small device that the dentist can use it inside the patient's mouth. And this intraoral camera would show the patient on a computer screen in front of him the issues that he has with his teeth, with his gums, and the treatment where the, the dentist would uh, 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 like uh, explain to the patient the dental procedure that he's going to do, and the, also the patient can and follow up the, uh, uh, the advancement in the dental uh, treatment that he's being provided by the, uh, by the dentist. Also, another method of diagnosis that has, um, that has witnessed a revolution is the intra, the dental radiography. In the past, we used to do radiographs using those films. Those films are a lot cheaper than what we use nowadays and uh, but the procedure is much more difficult because you would have to put the film take the radiograph take the film to a dark room and then process it and then it's about five to seven minutes until you can figure out whether your x-ray was 
correct, whether you've captured the required details, and whether it had the, uh, the sharpness that you wanted it to be. As opposed to the digital radiographic sensors, where you put it inside the patient's mouth, you take the radiograph, and then it's directly projected on the screen. The, uh, the X-ray is really sharp, well-defined, and the details are very, very nicely shown on the screen. You can enlarge, you can make it smaller, you can do all sorts of measurements on that. So it has made the diagnosis much easier and quicker. And the, then the exposure, the X-ray exposure is a lot less than the, uh, the radiographs that we used before. So it is much, uh, it's less risky to the patient and the dentist as well. However, it has some drawbacks. And the first one of them, as all other uh, technological advancements, it's much more expensive. Uh, as a dig digital sensor would cause a few thousand JDs, those, a whole pack of the older uh, films would cause maybe 10 JDs or something like that. And uh, sometimes you would need more than one size of a sensor to be able to use it in different parts of the mouth. And also this sensor is made of rigid plastic, so sometimes it's not easily adaptable to all parts of the oral cavity. Another advancement in dental radiography, which has also helped in, uh, in the easily diagnosis and the, um, uh, the uh, execution of dental procedures, is something we call conbeam computed tomography. It is a special type of CT scans. I think you all have heard about a CT scan. So it takes sections and a 3D image of the whole thing. So it shows more details of the teeth and the surrounding tissue and the, uh, the bones also, instead of having a 2D image of the oral structures. And it is nowadays widely used in root canal treatments and also in planning and executions, different types of surgeries, such as the extraction of wisdom teeth and planning of dental implants, because it allows us to have, as we said, a 3D detailed and accurate image with lower radiation than the regular CTs. And as we can see over here, that we can do some measurements of the bone height, as well as it shows us also the bone width over here, which cannot be seen in regular radiographs. So this is a very uh, a good instrument that, uh, or a diagnostic tool, but Again, it is more expensive. A regular radiograph would cost uh, a patient to, to pay like 10 JDs, whereas this one might be up to 50 JDs. And it's not widely available in dental clinics and in um, uh, radiographic centers as well. So it's still limited. Now we move to another example, which is really my area of expertise because it is my specialty, which is the, uh, the fix and removable prosthodontics. Uh, I think that you all know what a crown or a bridge is. Either you have one or you went with your parents or with your friends to a dentist to have one, okay? So in the past, when you go to the dentist, you go and take, the dentist would finish preparing your teeth, then he will start by taking an impression of your teeth, okay, to get a negative replica, which would be sent later on to the lab, poured into a model, and then the model would be worked on by a dental technician who would start mixing the materials and then building up the prosthesis and then baking it, finishing it, and sending it back to the dentist to put it inside the patient's mouth. This procedure is called the manual workflow, and it's still widely used in institutions and in clinics. We even, our students learn to use it in the, uh, at the University of Jordan. But as opposed to this one, where a lot of inaccuracies come all over the way from taking the impression into pouring it into the lab, which depends highly also on the manual skills of the technician, we have another newer thing that is also 
crawling its way into the dental profession and starting to become more and more used, which is the digital workflow. Again, we go back to this intraoral camera, which can capture the same impression that we were talking about before, and it is projected on the screen, as we can see over here. Okay, so this is equivalent to the impression in the manual workflow. So it takes the details of the teeth, the surrounding structures. And after we are done with that, we send this to our lab. The lab would have the same software. It would start building up the, uh, the prosthesis on the software. And this is called computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing, or as we call it in dentistry, the CAD CAM technique or the digital workflow. It allows us to get really precise prosthesis. And as I said, it uses digital impressions and models. Now the lab is looking at it. He's designing the, the, the prosthesis. He sent it back to us via email or WhatsApp or whatever. The dentist can look at the final prosthesis, the size, the shape, the color, the everything. He can make sure that everything is okay. Then the lab would send this to a milling machine or printing machine that would do the whole prosthesis and then they take it out of the machine and they send it to the dentist. So no humans are involved in there. It doesn't depend on the human's technical skills or abilities. So we have less errors in that and more precise prosthesis. Again, this is a, a very uh, nice uh, way to perform crowns and bridges. However, it's not widely available because the intraoral camera would also cause around 15K or something like that, besides the software, and it's still limited to certain clinics and certain labs. And we still rely more on the manual workflow. However, I believe that in the near future, things would turn to the digital workflow. Prices would go down like everything else in the world, like the prices start high and then they start going down because it starts to become widely available for everyone. Another example is also the use of lasers. The use of lasers uh, has made also the, uh, the dental practice, the surgeries much easier and more uh, convenient to the patients. It is widely used in gum surgeries, in teeth whitening, in uh, the removal of bacteria and tooth canal treatments, and also in taking biopsies. They are less invasive, more comfortable to the patient and more precise. Again, the cost is a little bit high. However, those lasers are more widely used than the other techniques like the CAT CAM, um, as I spoke about it a little bit a while ago. They are more used than the CAT CAM in surgeries and by dentists. Virtual reality. So I bet you all know better about virtual reality than I do, but it's also uh, used in dentistry. It's the creation of interactive simulations. It is beneficial to show the patient or simulate the procedure for the patient to decrease his anxiety. And also it is a way where the students can train and practice the dental procedures in a controlled and safe environment. Unfortunately, virtual reality for dentistry is not available in Jordan until now. And also it's not really widely available in, in, in in the whole world, it's only limited to, to institutions and to teaching dental students, that's all. Because of course, obviously, of the high cost of this technique. And last but not least, I'm gonna talk also about artificial intelligence. You are also more familiar than artificial intelligence and how it works more than I do. But nowadays, it's really a hit in dentistry and it's widely used in dental research and it gets a lot of citations for publications. So anyone interested, <laughs> let me know. I have an idea and I'm working on that. So it uses algorithms to analyze patient information and it can detect patterns and identify potential issues. Usually what we use is photographs, x-rays or patient's histories. 
uh, now uh, for photographs uh, it was there's a lot of research about taking photographs from inside the oral cavity of patients with normal tissue oral pre-malignant and cancerous tissues this is better actually than taking biopsies because it's less invasive it doesn't cause patient discomfort and sometimes inside the oral cavity uh, the, the human eye can miss certain details. Sometimes we cannot uh, distinguish between the normal tissues and oral pre-malignant tissues. But as for the artificial intelligence, it does. And a lot of cases, it's, it's with high accuracy. We can also use it in uh, dental radiography, uh, in the detection of uh, dental caries or, uh, or periapical lesions. And also, uh, it, is, uh, it is also used uh, in orthodontics in periodontics and in a lot of dental disciplines nowadays and as I told you it's um, it's really a hit for research nowadays for dental research so as we all know like the future is for the technology and it's scrolling its way into the dental practice as well hopefully prices would go down so that we would be able to use it on a, a wider base than what we do uh, nowadays and thank you all for listening. Thank you.